bad counters on Druid. If you're able to get the duel, then you're in great uh, position, but or great standing. They did ban it, though. They ban SF and OD, which makes sense. Uh, both are really good counters against Ember Spirit, and you really want to secure Ember Spirit the best lane he could possibly get. That being said, there are a lot of counters to Ember Spirit, so when you put out those two mids uh, that are being banned, then you're giving, giving Geek Fam the chance to get a mid that they, they're good with, and you're just kind of wasting those bans in a way. So remain. we'll see how this works out we see the coddle pick up on clutch gamers for the third see they pick invoker you ban the sf you ban the od and you still get screwed over because they pick invoker granted we don't know how well geek fam's invoker is but axe invoker combo is scary nonetheless so we're just gonna have to see how t he does with invoker he is the mid player for them i i hope them the best uh they really better hope that that they can that Ember can hold out the lane against Reserve Invoker. Time. So then you do have the Coddle, you have the Slaughter to help you out. There's, it's not the end of the world, but you're putting yourself in a tougher position, without a doubt. Now you could put that Ember safe lane, then you could pick up a hero that does really well against the Invoker. Like I think TA is is not bad here. We do pick up Nyx Assassin. Hmm. So I think that's going to be an off lane slaughter. I can't imagine. It could be a Nyx Assassin off lane. That's been doing really all well recently. I think it's going to be a Nyx Assassin off lane. So they're looking for a safe lane carry or a mid on their last pickup. And then Geek Fam are looking for a, another support, is my guess. Uh, assuming Axe is not going to go jungle, he's going to go off lane. So we'll see how well uh, Geek Fam get the draft here. They have a minute to decide who they want, and uh, we'll give them that time. But otherwise, overall, I like Geek Fam's draft a little more, again, because I feel like Lone Druid is a really strong hero, and if you get the right supports, you can support him until he starts carrying you on his back. And I think Axe Invoker combo, Axe CM combo is, is beautiful nonetheless. So we'll see how this works. It is game two. Anything could happen, you know, throws uh, i think both teams are capable of beating each other i think that clutch gamers even with a weaker draft though are maybe the stronger team nonetheless so it is somewhat favored toward their side we'll, we'll see uh what they what they do we see the ls band finally come out feel like uh feel like that could have been could have gotten that band earlier right i mean you could have picked up nicks early i don't think that they're going to be planning on picking ls they would have picked LS fourth pick, Five if anything. Seconds, really? But I think LS is a great pick here, right? He's not countered too hard by Axe. He counters Invoker. You just pop a Rage. You can get out of a lot of the sticky situations that CM can cause. And as I said, you have two initiations off the Slaughter and Ember. That being said, you have a lot of single target with Slaughter and Ember. And Ember does have Flame Guard, I guess. But <sighs> I would really like to see Ember safe lane. It may be a... Some type of mid that gives some magic damage, or you do need some DP. You need some physical DPS, though. Ember is going to go magic build. You really don't need magic, extra magic build. You can go DPS because you want to make use of Crows of Haves off of Slaughter, right? And the best way to do that is by getting a physical hard hitting carry. They ban Bounty Hunter, so it's a Clinks, maybe. That's my guess. You could pick up Clinks if you're banning Bounty Hunter. I don't see why else you'd ban Bounty. Nyx isn't too hard of a. Isn't too countered by bounty like i'm not afraid of as a nix if i get tracked uh but maybe they think remain. that bounty hunter is a good a good hero remaining. Uh, da -da 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 -da. reserve time they have uh 20 seconds to decide who they want to pick still we'll see what they do And they're going to be picking up Luna. So there's going to be a Luna safe lane. Uh, Ember mid. I don't know that... I don't think that they have the... The support to back up the Luna. I think that Luna is a good hero nonetheless. Even though they reduced base damage by 5. Uh, that, But still, I, I don't think that Luna was the choice here. I feel like you could have picked up the LS earlier at stage 4. Then picked up Nyx at 5. Or picked up LS... At stage four, reserve time, and then you had a of a multiple uh, multitude of options on the off lane. Like, Underlord's still not banned. I would have liked Underlord this game. We saw how well he did for Geek Fam. 
but it is what it is. We'll see what Geek Fam do. They need a support. So any support that counters Luna very well would be a good pick. If they want, they could be greedy. They could go Underlord here Five to counter the Luna. Remaining. He is very good in lane against her. Axe would go jungle, but I doubt they're going to do that. They're going to pick up Night Stalker. Night Stalker is going to be the position four roaming, I guess, and it's going to be a position five CM. Looking at the lineups, I really don't like either of them. I think that clutch gamers are. I think it depends on laning stage. I think that if clutch gamers harass Lone Druid just like they did last game, and if Luna, Luna gets the farm uh, that she needs, they'll win this game. But I like Geek Fam's draft more. You guys know I'm a big fan of just having it being a 2-0 quit uh, game. I'm not the biggest fan of BO3s just because I am super exhausted. You know, uh, it's really, it's really late or I guess early uh, where I live at the moment. So. I'm going to say Clutch Gamers just because of my mentality and uh, sleepiness. Plus, I do have some cleaning to, to get done. So. Five seconds remaining. Green froze. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Put on that toggle assisted camera because it is super nice does half of the work for me. Oh, man. Yeah, if you guys are here, uh, make sure to stop by, say hi. Love getting shoutouts. In other news, actually, before I, I start rambling, let's take a look at. I want to take a look at the how well teams did in this cup and the group stages. So, looking before I introduce everyone, we're going to see Geek Fam at 6 and 2, and then Clutch Gamers at 8 and 0. And really looking at Group A, it is such a volatile, a volatile stage uh, because you get, you get a situation where it's next gen 6 2, Geek Fam 6 2, Evos 6 2. They all played against each other, and they, I think, all lost two games to each other at some point. So, Evos, I'm pretty sure, is... I want to say they're now... Got to check where they're at. I'm not really worried about early game stuff that's going on. 30 seconds uh, Evos is in the quarterfinals for... Uh, quarterfinals for... Huh? I think the bracket here is wrong, but they're in the quarterfinals and the losing bracket. Uh, meanwhile, RQ is in the quarter in the quarter, semifinals for winners bracket. Right, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of here, but but. Okay, so Geek Fam is the only one that remains left in the <clears throat> in the bracket right now. They're in the semifinals, and if they lose this, then the winners' finals is going to be two teams both from Group B. So we'll see how that works out. Sorry again, I was just really curious. But yeah, uh, Geek Fam went six and two, and Clutch went eight and zero. I think both teams are respectable to 
to do well against each other, but, but Clutch has been proven as a stronger team. We're going to see First Blood actually come out pretty early. Nick's Assassin is going to get picked off by the Sunstrike from Teehee. He is going Exhort Force level 1, of course, and then we'll see if he goes Cross Wax afterwards. Meanwhile, Bing having a tough time getting those last hits. Again, you know, 46 base damage, plus 14, sure, from Lunar Blessing. Uh, so it is really hard for her to get the last hits right now. We'll see how she does. You know, it's been one minute, right? One, two, three, four, five. She's already missed two creeps. It's really not a good start, especially when you have a, a support there to help you. <coughs> Have really good synergy though between Boombax and a Bing. They're uh, talking with each other as to how they need to help each other and hitting these, hitting these creeps and ensuring that she gets the last hits. So she's lost only three now, which isn't too bad. Seeing one druid's also at five, at top. <clears throat> All right, now I'm just trying to get some levels, playing safe, going for a poor man shield. It looks like Coddle is assisting him in the dual aggro offlane. They just really, they've lost all their mana. There's not much that he can do at the point. Moment. A soldier's fortune. We're gonna see a Basilius come out on Luna, so she's not gonna be rushing uh, anything like a Dominator. She's gonna get the Basilius maybe to harass with Lucent Beam uh, to get that aura. Uh, we'll see how that does her in lane. She'll maybe rush an Aquila. She doesn't have the stuff necessary for it just yet, but she can always do so. Milo's trying to put pressure on Boobax. He doesn't see Fly Soul though. Fly Soul is still level, level 1, so it would be just an Illuminate or Auto Attack Harass that would get from him. We're going to see the stun come out from Slaughter. Milo's going to use his Axe Call to give him extra armor. We do have stun out in one second, and it looks like it's going to be second blood for our being. Hungry Nova? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Pretty standard on the sa uh, safe lane and off lane, though. You know, just a little aggression, one death on both off laners. We'll see how our Mel's doing against Tihi. Last hits are pretty standard. You're seeing Invoker get some more denies than <laughs> than Ember would like, but it is an Invoker, right? I can't believe you fall asleep and then wake up in three hours. It's crazy. So see, right as Flame Guard comes out on Armel, Tihi's gonna use Tornado and just take it out, and and it's it's really Armel's main pressuring uh, spell, and and not only that, but his main farming spell. So I don't know what's going on with my camera. I don't know why I just did that. Night Stalker's waiting for level f uh, or waiting for minute four maybe to roam around. He is kind of lacking on the levels. He's only level two. He'll be able to pick up Rune and maybe that'll give him uh, a couple of extra XP points. He's gonna see if he can farm with the Iron Talon. Don't know if that Iron Talon's necessary. I guess he might want to farm during the nighttime before he does anything crazy. That's exactly what he is gonna be doing. He gets level three. I'm assuming he's gonna opt for Silence. Uh, We'll see if that's exactly what he wants to do, or if he changes up and goes for level 2 knight to get the uh, move speed bonus, which I don't think that extra 5% is going to do him well enough. This is one of those things where it doesn't scale as well compared to his other spells. Night Stalker is going to get spotted out by the Nyx. Does he come back is the question. I, I don't think Nyx is one of those heroes he can kill at the, um, at the moment. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. We are seeing Velo get pressured or Bello getting pressured even more. Boombex's stun is up in one second. So is Luna's stun. They're going to dodge out the call. Stun comes out and Bing's going to get the last hit on the kill and it's 2-0-0. Again, yeah, Luna's not doing so hot on last hits, but she is getting the kills, and that's what really gives her the farm. So we'll see how she does with those two kills on the 25 less that she has. She does go for the boot. You know, she has a lot of small items. So we'll see how well that benefits her. Amber has been pressured really out of lane. He knows he can't get the farm he wants. 
She's eight behind on the invoker, which is about 400 gold. It's not too big of a deal, but he is having to farm jungle to secure his other last hits. Slaughter looks like he's going to rotate to see if maybe he can put pressure on Tihi. But uh, Tihi, there's, there's really nothing you should be worried about. You see Sunstrike, he tries to land it on Nyx. I think he might have landed it on Nyx, don't know. Nyx is going to fall down. Night Stalker is going to fall down in the meantime to a neutral creep. Not sure if that was intentional. Or if he was just not paying attention. Boombax is going to go in, stun the bear. Bear's getting really low, but I don't think they can kill. Uh, he is doing his best, though, to try to kill that. We're going to summon a new bear from Sionix. And, you know, his farm is is doing decent, right? I mean, most of his items, I'm assuming, are on the courier or are in inventory. We have a, a wraith band and an iron, iron thingy. What's the ring of protection? That's a... And he has treads, right? So he's in good standings. Again, he has 40 last hits, 42 last hits, and, and 26 denies. He's right up there with his invoker. He also has two kills. So it's really benefiting him and the assist. So I'd say he's about par, even ahead of the But it does go for the early Aquila. She's trying to put her pressure. She has level 3 Lucent Beam. She could put pressure on Velo. We'll see what happens, though. She does use a clip, stun comes out, and Bella's gonna drop right away. Uh, he didn't see that coming out, I guess. Uh, very risky. Sionix is bottom, though. Don't know if he was rotating to farm jungle or to put pressure on a Bing. He's gonna have to try and get the lucky root. He is gonna get it. Sunstrike's gonna come out. It's gonna land. She's gonna try teeping away, but it's a killing spree for Sionix. Really good rotation, you know? It's really nice to see those safe lanes who get the farm and participate in team kills. It's nice to see Invoker landing some of his stun strikes. He's not getting the kills, which kind of harms his farm, right? He is a little uh, behind in that situation. But he is. He has a 7-minute Midas, so... You can't complain there when you have 51 last hits in 7 minutes as an Invoker. You've basically won your lane. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I really think the game's gonna shape up during the the team fight stage though. Raji is trying to come in. He does go tranquil as usually don't see that on a night stalker. We'll see how it does. We have Boombax coming out with the sun. They're gonna try landing Sunstrike. He's gonna get hit is gonna hit Boombax. We do have Sam coming in to help out. Crimson's going in. We're gonna see the call uh, the dunk come out from Velo. He's gonna get really low. Slaughter's gonna get in a tough position. He's gonna get dunked as well, but Velo's gonna fall down. Luna doesn't have eclipse, but she does have stun uh, ready. She's gonna pop it and really should only be one last hit left on her. She does have stun, but she's not gonna be able to hit it. Raji's gonna slow down the uh, situation. We don't have... She's gonna try killing herself to creeps, but Faisal is gonna get the kill. <laughs> Meanwhile, Invoker's taking middle tower. We're gonna see Boombax come in and defend the situation. Looks like he's doing a good job. Sionix farming in. He's got 1900 sitting gold. That could be a, a nine minute dragon for us. If that's the option he chooses to take. They are going to go on him though. Hannah and Amp is scouting out. I don't think Sionix knows he's going to land the Impale. We're going to see all three remnants connect. It's not going to do enough damage to kill Sionix though. Even with the double damage. Hannah and Amp is going to get rooted. And there's really not much that Radiant can do. They're just getting some failed ganks right now. And it, it's not paying off. And Teehee with a, I I don't even want to look at the net worth. Because I feel like the net worth can be 3k. Maybe... I'm gonna say two two thousand five hundred in the wave geek fam. I am nowhere close. All right, four thousand. That is a nine minutes. That is a lot of gold. And not to mention, I mean, looking at Slaughter's farm, right? He is a support, but nine minutes in, tranquils. He's farming towards a blink. It's not great, but it's gonna start climbing. Dragon Lass is out on Moon Druid. He's trying to farm up his Maelstrom as soon as possible. Luna going, and she almost has her, her Dominator, which is, is good. I mean, having a Dominator Aquila treads at 10 minutes is, is really good farm for Luna. She's just kind of getting showed up because, you know, the farm's a lot better uh, for, for Geek Fam. She's getting the kill, though. That's going to help her secure another 400 gold. Raji is actually worth a lot. For being a support, will help him stay with the levels of his uh, teammates. Uh, it'll help out his farm a little. Bellow's going to get scouted out by Armel. Not sure where that fight happened. Looks like it happened down here. Armel's going to use two of his remnants, I'm guessing, and then uh, to secure that kill. 
Luna is going to get scouted out with the Sun Strike. She's going to drop. Does a lot of damage. He, he has a lot of levels. He's level 10 right now. I think he's the highest level. He's a second highest level. Boobax taking damage from the uh, cold snap. Just not enough mana right now on Invoker to do what he wants. Really, Deafening Blast costs him 300 mana is ridiculous at level 1. I feel like they should scale that to make it fair, like, per point of Exhort and Quest and Wex. It's like 50 mana, or like 5 mana each or something like that. Maybe not 5 mana, like a base of 75, and then per level it scales up by 5. That That would be cooler to see. It's like it costs 105 or 125 um, early on. Maybe it's making a simple hero comp, a, a complicated hero even more complicated. That'd be really cool to see Invoker spells scaled to his levels. Like some of like some of his spells go down as he levels up, and then some of them go up. So for example, Ghost Walk starts off at like 200 mana, and then it goes down to zero mana. We are gonna see. Uh, they want to go onto Invoker. Armel is there with two of his remnants. Hana and Amp is going to fall to the axe. I don't think he actually is handling that damage very well. He's going to live with 17 health. Uh, Armel there does get the last hit, I'm pretty sure. And Sionix is going to get the tower at top. So decent trade, I guess. A lot of gold coming out. Oh, no. Bing got the kill off yeah, I'm sorry. We didn't even see that. Bing was there. See, Coddle's clearing out the waves. Bing's gonna get the last hit on the tower. He's going for straight Yasha. Maybe he'll build that into a Manta. I can't imagine him going for Dragon Lance after he gets the Yasha. I feel like you just want to go straight Manta against these heroes to like purge off silence. They're gonna go for Night Stalker. He does have the movement speed to run away. You know, I guess looking at it, the as a support Night Stalker, Hunter in the Light with, with Tranquil just gives you the speed uh, that you need to roam around and position yourself well enough to help your team. So. Not gonna flame. I think it, it's working out decently. Uh, net worth wise, it's still in the lead. Probably like 3,000. Yeah, 3,000 in, in the way of Geek Fem. That being said, we're seeing a CG uh, starting to shift away towards their game. You know, as I said, Ember is one of those game, uh, heroes that just doesn't do anything for a really long time, and then, oh crap, there he is with uh, power to do a lot of damage. We're gonna see Coddle come in. I don't know if they can kill. Uh, Axe, oh, they do tear, teleport a Bing. That was really good uh, synergy. Not sure if you needed Eclipse, but Eclipse does cut through and give you the damage that's necessary. That's Yasha. Almost Yasha at 14 minutes. Teehee. Get in the early Axe. This is a build we see recently. If you're not losing lane, you don't want to go for a Yules or anything like that. You just go straight Axe. And we'll see how that pays off for Geek Fem. I think it's smart too, right? I mean, you're going for the early team fight. Lone Druid is a great hero overall. Oh, Lone Druid's going Manta style. I guess it's nice to purge off the the, the, the slaughter. I don't know if that's the item of choice that I would ever go on a Lone Druid, though. I don't know. Maelstrom is probably twice as better, twice as good. And, and it said, last but not least, if we're talking about Lone Druid, it's like Manta against Luna. Not, not the best idea ever, because she'll just cut through that damage but hey i'm not gonna hate as i said uh they, i don't play the ones that ever, so they probably know more than me but i just haven't seen that build at all crimson is gonna get the purge creep purge is still gonna come off though it's not gonna do anything though just gonna harass maybe radiance bottom tower is under attack dyer's top tower is under attack They're going to, have to be TPing a being down bottom to help defend Ember. No, they're going to go mid, it looks like. They'll rotate mid. Going to push out mid while bottom's being pushed out. Don't think they're going to be able to uh, trade this in a significant amount of time. A being just doesn't have the movement speed or damage to catch up uh, fast enough. Bottom's going to be dropping really fast to Tekken Sionics. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hmm. 
Bing does grab the. He does. He actually does go for Dragonlance. I was totally wrong. I said that he wouldn't. Uh, I didn't think it was right, but he's gonna go for the Dragonlance. I, the stats are nice. I just feel like Mantis style will help you farm a lot faster and catch up. And maybe the farm is not what you're looking for. You're just looking for stats. Maybe you want to fight a little earlier, and that's what your team wants. So we'll see. Still think that. Still think that. Uh, Dragonlance is the best situation. Or no, sorry, that the Mantis is the best situation. Nick's going for an early blink. Slaughter going for that blink. He just got it, actually. Uh, we'll see what they do with this. Again, it's very aggressive in their, their ways, knowing that net worth is kind of at a stale point, you know. Uh, it's the thing of it being at 3k and staying at 3k, it's it's not good for Geek Fam because this means that, that CG is farming now at the same pace Geek Fam is, or they're gaining gold at the same pace Geek Fam is. Taking a look at XP net worth, it's also the same way. It's starting to you know, go towards the way of Geek Fam. And sure, you have that lead, but a 3k lead really diminishes uh, its point. If we're looking at it across the spread, uh, the spread of of five heroes, or even even three heroes, 1,000 gold is so minuscule, right? You need to get to 10,000 to really say, "Wow, this team is is actually maybe kind of in the lead." Uh, 3,000 is is no small number, but it is really. When we're talking about team net worth, it is a very big number. We're going to see the smoke come out from Dyer's side as they start looking for... Okay, they're not going to go for the pickoff. They don't find anyone. Uh, so they're just going to go straight for Roshan. And they're going to be able to get it. Uh, Radiant's preoccupied at bottom farming the tier 1. Maybe they're pinging out. They're like, hey, they're taking Roshan. But it's going to be too late for Radiant to notice or even get there uh, for them to do anything. And maybe this is what CG need. Maybe they need uh, to get this tier 2, to get that extra uh, XP. We're going to see uh, fortifications come out. They're looking for TPs, seeing if anyone's coming. Looks like they're just going to run there. Xeonix does uh, agree to TP eventually to bottom tier 3. But the positioning on, on Radiant side is, is no... No laughing matter. They have really good positioning and really good warding. So they'd be prepared for any fight that would be coming in their way. So they're going to drop the tier 2 and uh, we'll see what they do. So we do have Dragon Mantle and 800 gold. 2100 gold from uh, Luna's Mantle. I think once she gets Mantle, she'll be in a much better, comfortable position. The Night Stalker going for the Ags to give some night vision against the Caudal. Bello here. This is going to be going blade mail. He actually has enough money. Was he going to buy it? Oh, no, he almost has enough money. They are going to get the call onto the slaughter or illusions. Looks like that's going to be wasted. They are going to get the kill on Night Stalker. Um, uh, Hana and Amps going to get the last hit. They're going to ping out the uh, ping out Bello the axe, but don't think there's much they can do. Maybe they just want to drop for getting with tier two again. We still have that Aegis on Moon Druid, so. Uh, as I said, no laughing matter. He's not going to be able to kill the creep in time. Armel's going to see if maybe he can farm some creeps. He actually might die here. This is not looking like a good uh, position for himself. He's going to TP in, though. And I guess once he's done with pushing out that wave, he did exactly what he wanted. Now he's back with his teammates at top, securing the Tier 2. You know, this is one of those things. You get the Tier 2, and then once you're done with that, he can just go back to defend Tier 3. So. Oceanics are really... Uh, Geek Fam's not showing any, any want to defend that Tier 2. So, looking at, at towers, this is indefinitely in the swing of uh, CG, right? They're up one tower, but as I said, like getting at net worth, it's still in the way of Geek Fam. It is swinging. I do think that net worth is uh, going to change significantly in the next 10 minutes as CG uh, have the better late game for sure. Uh, we'll see how it works, though. They do try to get the sneaky smoke. Uh, there is no vision on, di on, ra on Dire to see that Radiant smoke, so maybe they could get a pick off here. There's a little ambitious Night Stalker comes out and then runs back in. It's as if he knew. And they're running back out, and Nyx is going to be farming. Draji is sitting in uh, the trees. They're pinging out the ward. I don't know if they actually know it's there or what's the situation. We'll see. They don't have a gel, I don't think. They do blink up there, though. Uh, they put down the sentry. They're going to spot it out. Not sure how they knew exactly, but this is what it is. 
I can see the diffusal blade on Lone Druid. This build is really interesting. Um, I don't know. You really don't see diffusal on Lone Druid at all. And, you know, just because it's new, it doesn't mean it's bad. But you don't see Manta either. Manta does help with you getting some more farm. It has some nice stats. But, but I really feel like Maelstrom and Mjolnir is the way to go on, on Lone Druid when you're playing Lone Druid. I'm going to see TP from Axe. Nyx is not going to be able to land Impale in time. If only he was there a half a second earlier. You see the smoke come out. Geek fam really want to use this Aegis, right? I mean, it's about to be reclaimed in a minute and 20. They haven't done anything uh, with it ever since they did get the Aegis. If anything, they lost a fight. They're going to go straight. Uh, looks like they're turning around, seeing if they could run into them while they, they run back and... This looks like it's going to be a bad fight. Slaughter is going to run into the trees and see if he dodge. She doesn't know that they're there. Axe comes off with the call. They are going to get one kill. But that being said, it's just to support Slaughter. You're letting Armel and Hananomp escape out of this situation. And the plays that are being read, though, by, by Geek Fam, you know, this just shows, or by CG, just shows how strong of a team that they are. Armel looks like he wanted to go on, on Crimson. Uh, he is rooted. He is going to get called. He is going to drop. Uh, that is a good kill. They are going to get Tiki at top, though. He's going to use Ghost Rock. They don't have any detection, so it really stinks for Radiant inside. Uh, we don't have a gem yet on Coddle, as he's broke as can be. He doesn't even have an Ags yet. And CG are definitely, you know, they, they read it. They know when a smoke is coming. They know when a fight is coming. And maybe they're a little slow to react, but they're doing a good job. And at the same time, Geek Fam do get this early lead. It's just what they do with this early lead is what matters the most. Boombax is going to run straight into Night Stalker. They're going to get the blink, though, off in time and the stun so he's going to be able to survive. Looks like the Aegis does run out. They got two kills off of the Aegis. It gives them some security. It's not too bad. As I said, you'd probably want more with an Aegis like that. Because you dropped a tier 2 for that Aegis. So Yolo is going to drop to Sionix. He tries to earn himself. It's not going to be enough. Armel does come in, but Manta style Lone Druid is able to chip away at the tower little by little. Max is going to stun. There's really there's nothing you can do to save him. Mega kill. Double kill comes out from Geek Fam. Under attack. Sorry, guys. Uh, looks like I wasn't talking on the uh, Zubu. Uh, my voice cast was down or something on OBS, so I turned it back. So we'll see. Uh, now you guys can hear me, thankfully, and we'll get back into talking about the game. <sighs> I think Velo is just looking out for, for a kill. He does blink away. He feels kind of paranoid. Maybe maybe they know that he's there, but they do not. They're going to be going for the CM kill. Uh, and the illusion, that is. It's not a real CM. Uh, Hand of Midas almost on Boombex. 25 minutes. It's a little late to get it, but we'll, we'll see how how it does for him. He is level 11. He really could use the extra levels. Hilo's going to come out and uh, call the creeps, and just like that, he is going to drop. So maybe they did know that he was there. They were waiting for that, it seems like. Night Stalker has a double damage, has nighttime vision. He's not going to spot anyone else out, but he does have a gem, so maybe he could be able to, to pick out uh, a hero or two. Armel's going to run right into them. He's going to get silenced, and he is gone. Still have the double damage on Night Stalker. He does have 112 damage. He could, he could see this tier tower, uh, two tower drop really fast. We have the Manta style, and I don't know. I'm just really <laughs> it'd be the weird build on Lone Druid. It's it's one of those things where you don't know how well it's gonna work until you see it. And I don't think that it's working great, but Geek Fam do have a significant lead, and it's still Lone Druid. It doesn't matter what items you go on him totally because he's such strong of a hero with his talent tree and his uh, spells right as long as you get dragon lance and you get the right talents who cares what you get as long as you keep getting uh, stats 
you know, it was like you never see a defusal on him, which I can't. I guess the defusal for for Ember is nice. For someone else, if you're trying to purge off a uh, problematic situation like mana drain, it's nice if you for Manta too, right? Because it stacks with the Manta on illusions if you hit someone. But I don't know. We'll see see how it works out for Cianix. The fact that he's getting a BKB is just this is a very strange build and. Again, these these people have more MMR than me. I don't, I don't want to sit here and judge them, but I think that him just going the Mjolnir build and maybe getting some tankiness off of Scotty if he wants, or or something along the lines of that. If if he wants stats, he can get another race. I don't think that the build that he went is appropriate. Taking a look at net worth, it has swung now to 12,000 in the way of Geek Fam, which is really huge. Uh, after the, the couple of kills here and there, they've finally taken control of the map. They're they're down to their tier threes. And do have a smoke from from Radiant side. They're trying to be aggressive, but at the same time, Dyer now starting to group up, plays three or four. Revilo is going to get scouted out here. He's going to go under the tier two. This looks like a really risky uh, gank, but Boombax is going to miss the stun. That's a team misplay. Armel then goes in and blinks and tries to land the uh, slide of fist root combo. But if you don't get the stun in the first place, you're not going to land the slide of fist root combo because Axe is going to TP away. <laughs> Roshan is going to be scouted out by Spirit Bear. And. We are going to see a team fight. Sorry, I was replying to someone on the zoo group. We're going to get a kill on Sionic C. This is now Wicked Six. Uh, Wicked Six. Uh, Vigo is going to get the kill on Fly Solo, and Sionic is going to get the kill on Hana and Om. Invoker looks like he was in Roshan. Ember is going to get away before he can get uh, killed here. Roshan is dropping pretty. It's going to drop to the dark side. Roshan Aegis is going to go to Sionix. I don't know, this is one of those things where I feel like CG has such a great high ground defense that Geek Fam are going to throw... Throwing... Uh, uh, Geek Fam are going to throw... The coin of the realm. <sighs> Gosh, what am I saying? Geek Fam are going to go throw uh, while they go high ground. Which, I mean, that's that's being said, though, is that that's maybe why they went Mantis style on Geek Fam. You can just put Alacrity on one of the illusions, you can give them an attack speed boost to use your ultimate, and then as long as you set low ground and do LD strat, what do you have to worry about? Night Stalker is just one of those heroes you don't see picked up as often, and it's really cool seeing him picked up. I guess the the vision that he gets, the detection is is immense. And until you get the gem off, you know you the only thing you can do is really smoke gank. He's gonna see you from miles away. He's gonna see your detection, and you have to ward in places that he's not gonna be able to pick pick off uh, the the wards. You're gonna maybe have to place them one or two at a time. And that's the thing, though. It's the same thing with Coddle, right? Coddle gets that extra vision, and that's also really nice. But problem with Coddle is that he's playing a hard five, so he's not getting the, the vision that he wants. Uh, he doesn't get the the eggs. He's had the same net worth for the past twenty minutes. Um, Druid looks like he's scouting, buying an item. He is gonna get the Scotty soon. He's going straight up stats. Like this guy's not going for any pure damage. His objective is to live, and that's a really mid-game centered. Uh... Game's very mid-game centered. Sionix is very mid-game centered with this this build. 
We're gonna see Axe get the call onto Radiant side. And Bing's gonna pop BKB. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He's gonna get forced out by his teammates. He's gonna try to escape. Uh, it is a double kill. Uh, or two kills for zero on Geek Cam. They're gonna get the call. Luna's gonna fall down. There's no buyback, and that is GG, ladies and gentlemen. We do have another remnant on Ember. He's gonna be able to escape. He's gonna go right back in, blink out, but. It's a four for zero trade as as Han and Am fall down. They have no buybacks. There's there's nothing that they can do. Looking at this fight recap, uh, it's another three thousand gold. He's gonna be able to get the kill on CM, but now he has no remnants. They were just waiting for creeps to push. Yes, Slaughter is up in fifteen seconds. Maybe Nix is up in thirty. But you're gonna be able to uh, secure a tower for sure. And honestly, I, I know that Night Stalker hasn't do, done that much in damage, but it, it, the LD and the Night Stalker have been a great combo. Uh, it's not that, that they're amazing together in the sense of they work well together, but the vision that Night Stalker provides is, is huge, and the Tranquils just give him crazy movement speed. They're gonna go on Psyonix, but as I said, even if you kill him, you have Aegis, right? You don't have Luna up. I think she had buyback for a second. Uh, then she didn't use it. There's Yonix. Let's pipe BKB, so this is kind of risky for them. He's gonna stay alive though. X is probably gonna get picked off. There's really not much that he can do. Uh, it's 500 gold, but you lose melee racks and your first tier 3. I can tell you just looking at net worth, it's gonna be at least 20,000. Alright, we're at 20,000. Almost. 18, 19,000. Uh, just off of that kill, they got 1,400 gold taking out the, the night. Uh, Dax. Again, the detection that Geek Fam's Raji provides is, is ridiculous. He can scout out a Nyx from miles away. Not so fast. That being said, when daytime comes, he's kind of screwed, but he's in daytime, or he's in night daytime, maybe. Uh, not even half of the game, right? I mean, we're talking about 80 seconds. So he's in daytime, 30 seconds out of every 80. Uh, that's also not during nighttime. Six eighths of the time, he's in day nighttime. We're gonna see the call come out from Zero as they try to get a smoke on Radiant side. They're desperate to grab anything to get the kill on Coddle. They're gonna get the kill on. The Knicks are gonna get a dunk on Luna. They do have a buyback on Luna, but there's really not much they can do. Axe is gonna get the kill on Armel, and that's a team wipe. Uh, Sionix is also gonna finish off and get the kill on Boombex. Teehee here has Alacrity. He's gonna be able to get the Reigns Drax and push out this wave. His team's coming slowly but surely. Uh, they are gonna get the movement speed bonus from Rabbit. Just he will. So he's traveling at like max speed. They could go for throwing, you know, but they're just gonna commit uh, for the, the top backs because they know they have buybacks on the inside. Top tower falls to most uh, to dire, and then the bottom tower is also falling pretty fast. They are gonna get back once the buyback comes out from our now. They're gonna get the stun on Axe. Axe does have call if he wants to. He's gonna call the Nyx. Nyx is gonna fall down in the midst of this fight. Boombex comes in with the stun. They're really low, and it's a triple kill for Armel. Could this be a swing fight for uh, CG? Uh, it's an ultra kill for an Armel. And here's the thing he did buy back though, so even looking at the situation, that was a good. You know, you, you get so much gold, right? It looks like it's a lot of gold. I mean, that, that's 2k gold. You're only getting 1,300 of it, right? Because let's take a look at gold. That was barely a dent in their 22k net worth. Barely a dent. They're going to see maybe we can get a tier 2 off of this push. I totally understand how they feel. They're desperate for anything. Again, that was Geek Fam possibly throwing but they're so far ahead that you're gonna need to see at least another two to three fights one for sure before you can say okay cg have a chance right now this game is still 95 percent favored towards geek fans 
T he is running at max movement speed. He is gonna spot out Coddle. He's gonna go on Coddle. He's gonna land the Sunstrike. Oh, he's gonna miss the Sunstrike actually. I don't know if that hit or not. Looked like it did. They're gonna get back. They're at a shrine. That's not something Dire wanna fight into uh, without the Night Stalker for sure. Taking a look at Lundrud's items, he's gonna be going for the butterfly. Uh, he is pretty far away from having it. He is 400 away from getting buyback, so that's kind of risky if he dies, but I don't think that that's gonna be a problem anytime soon. They do have gem, I'm pretty sure though. So that's also a big plus. That means Night Stalker hit him by another one. I think they had gem. We're gonna find out. We're gonna look, see if there's anything here, over here. There's just not enough wards. Yeah, Connell does have gem. He needs that egg though, I mean, that's handy. what gives him all the extra, the, the vision, and get that, I think, from spirit form either way. If you get that from spirit form, that's what eggs does. Does eggs do? Does eggs do? Uh, once you apply your ultimate on another hero, it's just all the four. Nope, that is a weaver. Okay, I still have my weaver build from a while ago, built. Because that was the last, was that the last game I played? Yeah, that was the last game I played. We were scratch. I don't know what's up. We're gonna get the call on Slardar. Oh, he does get pushed out of the way. He's gonna get pushed again uh, with four staff. He's gonna fall down though. Most of the spells, all the BKPs are out on Radiant side. They're gonna try TPing away. He's gonna get rooted. Luna is gonna fall down. Luna does have the uh, buyback if he wants to come back and fight this. This is just really tough. The calls that are coming out, the, the items that Dire Side have, is just something you can't fight against. We were talking about that dent that made a 4k net, and now it's starting to plateau, and it's going to go back in the side of Dire. Luna's going to have to buy back here if she wants to win. I mean, you're going to be seeing tier 3, the last tier 3 drop, and you see top racks fall in you know, a break of AI to Sionix. I mean, sure. You, do you have fortifications? Yes. Is it going to be enough? No, no way. Luna no. buys back. They're still going to lose melee Rex, though. They're going to try going onto Lone Druid. You get the root coming from Ember, but. Ooh! We get the three mad X call. Nyx is going to fall down, and Bing is a dieback, and that is GG. Ember is going to fall. GG is called and it is 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, CG, I think they were really cocky. They, they really felt like they could have won something that they maybe could have went ahead and and say, let's let the LD through. Let's let's let us get countered by invokers playing Ember Spirit. Let them have X. Let them have all these heroes that do well against us. As I said, Geek Family.